one orchid and 22 different blooms. Let's have a closer look. This is my Neo Stylus Loose Near Re Blue. Thank you for clicking on this video. <laughs> I wanted to show you the full blooming of my Neo Stylus Loose Near Re Blue because she is certainly unique in her own right. First of all, let me just get into the fragrance of this orchid and why I keep her despite all the funky weirdness going on and the fact that she is most definitely virused because of all the funky weirdness that we can see. <laughs> her fragrance is what makes me keep her. Well, maybe her colors as well, but that fragrance is the most potent Neo Stylus Loose Neary fragrance that I have in my collection. And I have another one, which is more of the classic Neo Stylus Loose Neary. This one has blue attached because the blooms are so much more solid and vibrant in their color, but oh, it came at a price. As you can see, I have two pieces. It's one in the same orchid. The one on the right has been capped off the main orchid that arrived in my collection in 2018, which is the one on the left because I wanted to try out the lacquer and self-watering. For reasons, videos of its history will be linked in the description. I'm sorry I'm getting distracted. Anyway, the fragrance is just amazing. It is very potent, even without any kind of sunshine on it and it is fragrant all day and well into the night. If you're not familiar with Loose Neary fragrances, they are the most elegant, divine, citrusy with a hint of vanilla kind of fragrance. It has the semblance of an extremely expensive perfume. Delicate but potent, if that makes sense. And this one has it in spades, and I would say quadruple the power of a Loose Neary classic fragrance and then put it on this one, and well, all the reason to keep it. However, <laughs> let's have a look at the blooms. I've taken some stills, and you will see why I've titled this video the way I have. <laughs> Beautiful hologram effect on the blooms. I only managed to get two perfect blooms out of all the spikes, but the color variations are remarkable. Now, the two oldest spikes, if you see the blooms look a little bit tired, that is just because I was waiting for the other two spikes to open, which are the first spikes on new fans that this orchid has been growing in the past three years. The color is so much more vibrant on those new spikes. Even though they are newer, they are more vibrant than the colors are on the older fans. Those spikes always come out a little bit more subdued, even though they maintain their hologram effect. But every single bloom is different. Petals and sepals are fused. A top petal is fused with a sepal. A lip can be split. Everything is fused together. One of the newest spikes looks like bluebells. The blooms aren't even opening. Everything is fused together. The spikes themselves just end in a curly whirly notion at the end with no more extension to them. And this orchid has been doing this since it is in my collection. Hence, I decapitated the main growth point at the top and put it into lecker and self-watering because I thought maybe there was issues with my watering habits. Maybe it was thirstier than I could provide in my climate. And for that reason, the main part was placed into lecker and self-watering to see if watering was an issue. And it turns out it isn't. And after a long back and forth of many, many years of observation and also depraving both pieces from any fertilizer to see if it would get out of its hormonal imbalance funk. Nothing worked. The only exception is that the piece in Lekka and Self-Watering is much more lush, has a bit more distance in the stem, the leaves are a lot larger, so it is getting more water and is responding accordingly. My climate is super dry, but the one in the basket isn't faring too badly. There's not really that much of a difference, and I'm getting new fans every single year in, year out. I was hoping that this year we might see some of the new fans bloom for the first time and maybe bloom clean. That is not the case, but I am not getting rid of the pieces because I am enjoying the journey with these two so, so much. Just watching them grow, doing their funky thing, noticing how the blooms don't even like being up against the metal of the hanger. Small little details like that is what I'm learning on this orchid. 
If you're unfamiliar with the history of this orchid, just a quick side note, even though the links are in the description, there are no pest issues with this orchid. The occasional mealybug, yes. But she's never had any infestation of thrips, if that's where you're headed with your mind. I've been watching this orchid so, so closely that I would have recognized if there was a thrips problem, a mites problem, or any other kind of problem that would result in these most amazing, strange, but beautifully fragrant looking blooms. Now there's many opinions out there about a virused orchid. Maybe this one isn't even virused. It is possibly just a genetical disorder because they pumped all the good stuff of so, so many loose nearies into this one specific orchid with the parentage that they overdid it on the hormones and the genetics have just gone out of sync. Either way, her weirdness, her quirkiness. <laughs> I thought I would quickly share that with you because I have a basket full of awesome goodness in a strange little way. And my pot on the right is starting to bloom out as well with some really, really strange looking blooms as well. <laughs> and the first spike of the fan that has been growing for the past three years is also growing, but it has its own special deformities. So there was no change in me decapitating it. It just is the way it is. If you would like to make my orchid feel a little better, I will let her know how many likes this video got. <laughs> if you want to share it, because it's one of the quirkiest things in the orchid hobby that you have seen, feel free to do so. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you did. It helps that YouTube recognizes that I do exist on this platform and hopefully gets me into the algorithm. And the fact that you watch to the end of the video is massive as well, so I want you to know that I appreciate that added detail. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Oh, while we're on the theme of beautiful colors, look at that. Dendrobium Victoria Regina is still in bloom and they complement each other beautifully. Stay safe. Bye.